Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the Nuffield Theatre for the Shipwrights Lectures. I'm Sarah Fraser and I'm a member of the Shipwrights Livery. This event is all about you, the apprentices and students, the future of our industry. Apprentices have always been an important part of the maritime industry and Brian May, Managing Director of the Birth and Boat Company, knows all about this. Brian is fourth generation in his 100-year-old family business and is a leading light of the Shipwrights Apprentice Scheme. In fact, he was the instigator in 2008. My name is Brian May. I'm the Managing Director of Birth and Boat Company. Together with my brother, we've owned the company and the family now for four generations. The history here goes back to the America's Cup where we built three of the yachts that competed in 1851 and ever since that day Burton has taken on apprentices. We were looking for support to essentially encourage our competitors to take on apprenticeships. Um, we were taking them on ourselves but we felt that the whole of the marine industry should be participating and when there was some government support available we put together a scheme which was eventually called the Apprenticeship Expansion Pilot, and we have since placed or hired ourselves over 100 apprentices with a 97% success rate in graduation in the marine industry. I got a very good bit of advice from my father who suggested that during recessions we should always take on more apprentices, not less. The reason being that skilled people still retire during recessions and we need to replace those skills and it's vitally important for the business. It also allows us to plan ahead and bid for bigger contracts in the knowledge that we'll have the labour available. The government has been doing an awful lot of good in focusing the providers, the colleges, in providing up-to-date, modern, technologically relevant training for businesses in their local areas which means that we've got a proper and secure future for apprenticeships in England as a viable career path. Brian, thanks for coming along. No problem, sir. <coughs> you say in the video that employers influence the curriculum that colleges now teach. How has this made a difference to your apprentices? Um, it's not just my apprentices, it's all apprenticeships. The trailblazers that some of you will have heard about um, are a method for the industry to change the syllabus so that they're totally relevant to what the businesses in the industry need for today. Uh, on the old standards, um, we, sorry, frameworks, I think it is, the old frameworks, were based upon a tick box regime that dated back some 30 or 40 years. And they didn't encompass uh, modern technology and pathways such as composites, spray painting, which are terribly relevant for not only boat builders, but also those who are doing repairs and uh, refits and maintenance. Does that include computers? Um, the white, the, the, what they call traditionally white collar versus blue collar um, uh, programs will come slightly later, I think, but it does because it teaches people how to read the plans that they're going to be building from. But not only that, um, in, in, the, in the early days where they're learning how to um, use tools and the new modern machineries and everything else, um, we even send ours on a, a day skipper course because a lot of them won't have been out on a boat. And this way they know at least the modicum of, 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 of going to sea, so that when they do get to go to sea on a sea trial or something, they're prepared for it. Mm. Um, family businesses are notorious for running out of capable management. Yours is fourth generation, and you've proved this is not the case. In fact, burton has gone from strength to strength. So how have you and your brother Dominic achieved this? Um, I, it, in a family business, it's very useful to have a brother involved as well because um, we symbiotically work together. And um, whilst we have certain roles, he's a bit more technical than I am, um, we do swap quite often depending on who's got spare time to deal with a certain issue. Sometimes it can be a problem. Sometimes there are two clients that want to come at the same time and they want to see you, so you've got to split up. Um, and there's no point of us 
both of us doing the same job because you're, you're just wasting time. Um, we, we trust each other to make the, the right decision. So that helps. And to, what about uh, your business background? Um, both of us were very lucky to have worked in the city. We did five years each in the city. Um, me as a fund manager in the UK, and he ended up on the life markets and then went to open a Paris office. Um, and that really taught us about the economics of running a business. In the industry, um, it's, there's quite a lot of people in the industry that do it as a lifestyle rather than as a business. And doing it as a lifestyle works because you're still passionate about it, but you can be passionate to do it as a business because you need to make the profits in order to reinvest, in order to create the um, competitivity, not only in the local scene, but in the world scene. And that's very important. And, and how important are the apprentices to your workforce for delivering that? Absolutely vital. I think the best bit of advice that uh, my father gave to me was that during a recession, you should always take on apprenticeships. Um, even if you think that you haven't got enough work to provide for them, because they can still learn by attending other people, their mentor. Um, for example, during this last recession, we went from 90 people working for Burton to 175 uh, during the recession. We took on a couple of big contracts, one for the MOD and one for the RNLI, and we were able to take them both on at the same time because we knew we had a pipeline of apprentices coming through and it was almost as if we were getting the contract to satisfy the fact that we had work, uh, sorry, we had the, 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 the availability of work coming up. Um, and, and, and that worked fantastically well. Um, it's absolutely vital. What, what advice do you have for your apprentices, or well, for apprentices generally, and what's the future for them, and how can they achieve it? I think the future today for apprenticeships and apprentices is fantastic, especially in the marine industry. With the modern trailblazers, they're going to be learning a much wider um, uh, uh, skill. It's, once you're certificated, it's transferable, which is very important. Um, and the most important thing is it's a caution, really, I suppose. We've all got mobile phones, and especially your generation. You've got the world at your fingertips, and everything is there tempting you away to do this, that, and the other all the time. And not just recently, but previously as well, some apprentices would start a process, a, a, a course, and they'd be lured away by either the uncle or a friend of the family who's running behind on a development project. It could be any type of development project. Mostly it's construction, I have to say. And, and the short-term um, lure of a couple of pounds an hour extra actually is not worth it because three years later, you will still be on those couple of pounds more, whereas your friends who've graduated or gone on to do a level four, might be going up towards um, management in a business, will be on... Uh, uh, almost 50% more than you, mm. and they won't have a certifi certificated skill. So it's very important for those of them who are here who are still in apprenticeships to continue and finish the course. And if you're struggling a bit, go and talk to your mentor or your HR person or, or the, man, the, the owner of the business and say, I'm, I'm not getting on with the chap I'm working with, or um, the school isn't helping me out on this one issue, or, you know, and then you can get over those problems. It's all about communication and mentoring. And do you feel there's a moral issue for apprentices to stay with the company? That's a very dangerous question. Very um, dangerous. <laughs> uh, again, with the transitory, um, uh, people expect younger people nowadays to have um, maybe multiple careers. And we can see that. What we might do is take on a little bit more apprentices in, in order to cater for that at the, in the longer term. It also helps the rest of the industry. It means that you're, you're doing your bit for industry, and that's from the company side of things. So if you want one apprentice, maybe take two on. Um, and then at the end of the process, one might leave and the other might stay, or both might stay, depending on what you're offering. Um, the most important thing is that they finish the course first. Now, this big question, but in a nutshell, what about Brexit? How do you think this will affect the young people in, in this industry? I think it's uh, heads you win, tails you lose basis. Um, uh, it's, I think I probably got that one wrong. No. It's a win-win <laughs> situation for Britain. <laughs> it's a win-win situation for Britain. Um, at the moment, those of you in production will know that you've got big order books because the pound's low and that's really helping fuel that. 
And so if we lose, the pound will stay low, and that will carry on. But if you really look at what's happened over history, 450 years ago, we had another similar issue with Europe, and this time on the re religious side, where we sort of said goodbye to the Catholic Church. Um, 50 years later, or 60 years later, Oliver Cromwell came in and took out, took out the crown and said, right, you're not running it properly. He then decided to give it back. Everything carried on for 400 years. We had a huge empire. We won two world wars, um, and, and we're still here. Politics doesn't control economics. At the end of the day, people have to eat, they have to um, get to work, they have to go on holiday, they have to do everything else economically will go on. Politics doesn't really get in the way. It makes headlines. And the one thing the newspapers need nowadays is headlines. They want you to read them on your phones. They want you to pick them up when you're traveling. So I'm, I'm not worried about it. We should be focused on what we're doing. We're learning, we're turning out good work, and we're competing on a worldwide basis. Thank you, Brian. There are lots of people here who've got a lot to thank you for. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>